hello, this is Neo, just an average CSGO player, and you're watching Florin's YouTube channel. In light of Virtus Pro's lineup getting shut down and it seeming as though none of them are going to return and they'll maybe make a new lineup around Snatchy, which obviously means that after Bialy leaving the team, Snacks before him, Taz being cut, if you go way back to last year, yeah, you look at this team, or earlier this year rather, you, you look at the squad and people say, time for Pasha and Neo to retire. They should retire. They should become streamers. They should become coaches. Skadoodle's gone. This is someone where people were telling him to retire. Retire after the major. Oh, retire in the past if your motivation's not into it. Anytime it's a big name, a relevant player, and people just see that he's not playing well anymore or he's far from his like peak level where you fondly remember him with fabulous nostalgia for when he was a wonderful player. People say, oh, it's simple. He should just retire, you know, like stop embarrassing yourself. Don't destroy your legacy or taint it. Even better, selfish reason, just go and stream. You'll make lots of money. It'll be lots of fun. First of all, the streaming angle, not as simple as that. It's absolutely not guaranteed that you will get as many views as you do now. I have seen from other esports games that as pros who were once top pros get more and more years departed, removed, from when they left the game and when they retired, the interest in them goes down. They're less relevant. There's not any feedback loop of them being a pro to feed into them watching them play. Now, unless they're incredible players when they're playing on, on their stream, unless they have amazing personalities, you have no reason to watch them over some other guy. They are just some other guy, basically. So even someone like Pasha, there's no saying in two or three years he could be a big streamer unless he becomes some sort of variety streamer and recreates his personality and really is able to capture people's... I don't know if that's going to be the case entirely or not. Maybe part of it was just streaming as a, a, a pressure release from being a pro. Would he want to do that all day long? Would he want that to become his job? That's the other thing that be the new thing that's not as fun as people like Dyrus found out in League of Legends. Also, doing that, quite frankly, is not going to scratch the competitive itch. You look at people like Pronex, you look at people like God B, you look at people like Existence. These are people who've all, even Sean Gares, they've all been in position to retire. They've all been in position to retire on top, under retire on the bottom, to retire somewhere in between. And the reason they keep going, the reason they keep coming back, the reason they keep giving it a shot, even if it's a lower level, is because they think of this way. Even competing at a lower level with the dream of maybe making it higher and being relevant again is better than just being a streamer or just being someone who does something for fun or quitting entirely. It's better than that. Even with the humiliation, even with the criticism, even with people memeing on you, it's still better. On some level, it's worth it for whatever it gives you. So I've got to say this to all pros out there who are being told to retire or thinking about retiring. And it's probably something that actually shock people because people would probably think I'd be harsh and tell them, get the fuck out of the game. You're not any good anymore. No, here's what I have to say to them. Fuck retiring. Fuck retiring until it's actually over. What I mean by actually over is you want to retire. You don't want to play anymore or you simply cannot. You are going to retire, if you listen to my advice, either when you don't want to play anymore and as soon as you don't want to play anymore, unless you're someone who has to keep playing because it's so much more money than whatever job you think you would do and you don't know what you want to do with your life, okay, maybe delay it a little bit then. But otherwise, when you're finished wanting to play, time to retire, okay, or when they won't let you play anymore. Top teams won't have you. Even mid-tier teams won't have you. No one will have you. You're so bad. You're not relevant anymore. Now you basically have been forced into retirement anyway. What are you staying for at that point in time? What can you do, right? But until one of those moments, until one of those scenarios occurs, fight with everything you have to keep hold of what you've got and fuck anyone who says anything otherwise. Get yours. Get your money. Get your games under your belt, scratch that competitive itch, continue to play, try and make it back if you can, try and maintain and be a relevant player, go ahead and get the guest best gig you can, the best team you can play for, and quite frankly, stay there until they hand you the pink slip and say, get out, don't go because of fan pressure, or some teammate says something mean to you, or implies you should retire, or you've had a couple of bad tournaments, wait until they actually come and have the balls to tell you, you are fired, and in the meantime, this is how to think of it, is your talent gone? Are you no longer a good player? You're nowhere near where you used to be. Well, first and foremost, reflect on that. 
understand that, but acknowledge that you don't want to retire if indeed you don't and that you want to play, but now you don't have talent anymore. So what are you going to do? Well, I'll tell you one thing you can do immediately that would make you a valuable teammate, which is go and find a way to elevate someone else in your team's talent and make them more effective, make them better, make them more comfortable. Maybe even teach them a thing or two along the ways, whether that's in-game stuff or along the way in terms of life. You have value as a veteran. You have experience where you don't have skill anymore you have a wealth of experience. Now, hopefully there was a Venn diagram sweet spot where you had maybe a little bit of decaying skill, but incredible amount of experience. And that was where you were able to be a complete master. As the skill fades, as you're no longer able to get to that level, you have to rely more and more on experience, but you can do so. And it doesn't have to just be in the game. It can be with how you deal with people because that veteran savvy, that experience that you can pass on to some of the other players and help them mature and help them learn things in the game, that is valuable to a team owner. And as long as you're not so bad that everyone's saying you have to be cut, he might give you some leeway in that particular sense. And you know what? Inside the game you can apply that veteran savvy you could probably still do something there's probably one spot you know well famously in Virtus Pro even when he was quite bad towards the end and he had a lot of problems you knew Taz could play on top of the hut as a CT on Nuke you knew he could play the lower ramp on train inside as CT because he's done these things his whole career and he's not doing them off raw skill he's doing them off understanding of timings and having played a bazillion spots there and understanding the intuitive aspect of what this might mean and from that and how to make an adaptation he could still provide value even when his skills had long since betrayed him even consider by the way maybe him transitioning straight up to a more supportive role start becoming an in-game leader become the secondary caller become a supportive player become the guy who gets baited when the entry, star entry fragger goes in and then cleans up the person who killed you, do any of these things. Find a role that isn't about shooting people in the head and find a way to be able to actually make money, make a career and keep playing if the competition is what drives you, if you love this game. I mean, there's great examples in both 1.6 and CSGO of people who did this. Like, I would say in 1.6, I pick people like Khan and DSN. These are guys who were at one point in time stars or big focal points of the team in Fnatic in 2005 to 2008. 2009 onwards, they settled back into being supportive elements and let other people shine and even got back to the top in doing so and became pretty good players for what they were doing. You could even say someone like Zonic within the MTW team. He used to be a star player, star fragger. As his career went on, it was more about being a veteran. That's why you remember him from his clutches, for being consistent, for being able to play in a two on X situation with someone else and have good comms. Nothing to do with raw skill and fragging people's heads off. In CSGO, the best example are the Virtus Pro players. Neo and Taz were the primary star players. Neo particularly particularly of the 1.6 lineups that won all those majors. In CSGO, beyond a little bit early on with Taz in 2013 and then Neo in like 2015, generally these players were never anywhere close to star players, top players, very skilled players, but they were able to do a fabulous job as supportive elements and as in-game leaders to allow Bialy and Snacks to shine, to allow this team to be able to stay at a high level, to be very versatile, to have a deep map pool, to have an ability to throw opponents off, to still be able to pull out crazy veteran moves that are just so smart like some of those clutches Neil would win he wouldn't just one shot you in the head he wouldn't just spray in some godlike fashion he would outthink you he would outposition you he would put you in a spot where you get uncomfortable and then all of a sudden I always say this when you're in a tough spot in the game and there's pressure your aim is the first thing that goes. Now it's all about composure. Now it's about being the guy who can think straight, not the guy who had this twitch aim because that's gone for you at this point. And that's why someone like a Nico doesn't just take over the major final at all times and dominate completely. If the pressure gets to him, you know what? He can fade and become just a normal player like some of the other players in the server. So beyond that, how about this? If you no longer have good teammates, They've left, they've moved on, you're the last left in the team or you're in a team that's on a lower level. Then again, show some young gun how to be a star. Make him your star and ride him right back up the scene to the top. They can take you somewhere. You can't go there yourself anymore. And the old people who could take you there aren't interested in it anymore. They've kicked you off the bus. This guy can take you there if you can aid him in doing so. If you can help bring him up quicker, accelerate his growth. Quite frankly, if you want to be of value to a team, not only do supportive elements and all these intangibles, use your insights to give input as to who they should bring to the team, who they should recruit, maybe even how to scout players, how to develop them, or when you get them in the team and they have some potential, how to cover their weakness so they look like an even better player, so they have even better impact on the game. It's more of a plus, less of a minus. 
Let's be real when it comes to retiring. This is the thing that's never said. There is no perfect ending. It is an illusion. It is the dream of narrative structure of movies that we want a satisfying ending that wraps everything up nicely. That isn't real life. That isn't sports careers. Even if you end up with what people would say is the dream ending, which is you win the major, maybe you even play well in it, and then everyone says, right, since you've had your problems, now is when you retire, so people remember you in the major final, that's all they remember, what a wonderful way to go, right? The problem with that is, then there'll be a part of you who will always think, ah, could I have repeated? Could I have done it again somehow, no matter how unlikely? What would have happened if I'd have played that next one? And you will never have an answer to that. If you play it, you bomb out and you go. So like what Pronax did in Fnatic. They won ESL on Cologne, despite how unlikely it was. Then they were nowhere near the number one team. They were like number four team or something for the next few months. They came to Dream Hack Clusion and Poker, the next major, to defend their title. They went out to Envious in the round of eight. Some of it not even that close, even though they won a map. And so they said, right, well, we gave it a chance. We tried to repeat. We're a legendary lineup. We couldn't do it this time. It's one of our worst placings in a major it's appropriate that we now make this roster move i go on you stay here it's been real loved what we did but we've got our careers to follow elsewhere so <clears throat> do everything you can to be great and to prepare that way when you've tried and exhausted all these opportunities then you can leave the game without any regrets you can leave the game without the what ifs you can leave the game without thinking you had a little bit extra or that if you'd have just had a six-month break and come back, you'd have been back at a top level. You'll know that's not the case and you will have peace and you'll have a complete career to look back upon. The notion of leaving on top like that, I mean, the classic example that people always give is Michael Jordan could have left in 1998 after hitting a game winner in game six against the Utah Jazz and winning his sixth title and his second three-peat. And people want to remember that that's the way he was. He never degraded. He was always a god. Well, the problem is we all know he would have been anyway, right? We all know he would have degraded and his teams wouldn't have won him off if he kept playing. So the fact he did play just confirmed that for you. He still was a good player on the Wizards. He could still do some crazy things every now and then. It was still amazing to see a, a 40-year-old man scoring 40 points. Yeah, this is this was still entertaining stuff. If you want to go remember him as the, the Bulls guy, well, just forget about the Wizards period. Why, what's the big deal to you, right? As I've said many times in the past that when Skidoo retired, I just love watching all the parts of a great player's career as long as they are in a part where I'm not getting overwhelmed by the circumstances of holding back a better young player or taking up a spot for someone else who should be there or stealing checks in some sense. I'm not blaming the player. I'm blaming the org here that they should have handed him the pink slip. Stealing checks in as much as you should be getting paid half as much, in which case your performance might even match that or the extra value you bring as a big name or someone who can apply veteran savvy. If Neo and Taz had... Gone to someone like King Win uh, and Pasha maybe, had gone to AGO, it would have been so easy to cheer for them, like it is now for Taz in King Win. He's at an appropriate level where he actually has value at that level. He ain't blocking spots for more talented play young players. Another young player instead of Taz brings less to King Win. Another player instead of Neo might bring less to AGO or Pasha to AGO. They are just where they should be right now, and they are valuable at that level because we scaled it down. Finally, one thing to remember, and a very good reason to think about in terms of why you don't retire and fuck retiring, is because this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to be elite, world-class, legendary at something in your life, something tangible people care about and might care for a 100 years beyond this, depending on what happens with esports. You won't have that chance in the future, and you won't have the choice to come back in two or three years. If you've been retired, two or three years i'm sorry to tell you no matter what you did in your career nobody's going to want you even if they remember fondly what you did they're going to forget about it now and they're going to say yeah what have you done lately can you do it now probably not right it's that great story where orson wells in his latter days in hollywood would have directors and big stars ask to meet him for lunch they'd have lunch they'd have a great conversation they'd never call him about a part no matter what they said they just wanted to have lunch with orson wells they loved what he did they had no interest in him in the past they'd forgotten him they'd moved on he was done as far as they were concerned yeah i've seen this with the 1.6 legends that haven't played csgo which who come back and then try to do a comeback. They don't make it. They don't stick with it long enough. They get discouraged because the younger players say, ah, oh, better than you now. You're shit. Like you're from the past, old man. Those guys wish they'd have just transitioned to CSGO. You will miss it as well when you're gone. First of all, as I alluded to, you'll need something to fill the gap. Something you can be one of the best at or feel satisfaction from or get a competitive kind of drive from a bit of a, a jolt, a thrill, right? What are you going to get that from? Just watching football, just having fun on a PlayStation with someone, staying at home with your family. That's the most overrated shit ever. Those things are all fun in moderation with the right people. If that's all you're doing all day long, that'll become real tedious real fast. So many ex-pros, I can tell you, who have retired... 
they regret it now or they wish they could come back or they wish they could get a shot to even try to come back to be like a lower level pronox of existence etc don't retire until it's over for you. This video was kindly supported by Dean Tanglis, Andreas Snazor Westerland, Gardner Wilson, Ollie J, Tobias Bernasconi, Nate DOGG, James Harding, Kyla Harris, Travis Greb, Daniel Yordanov, and as always, a special thanks goes out to Jerky's Minion. Would you like to suggest a topic or a guest for some of my upcoming content? Perhaps you want to ask me a question in my monthly AMA. Do you want to see some teasers? See who's going to be the next guest on one of my shows? Maybe you want to take part in an esports discussion with me. Well, put your money where your mouth is and join the Screluminati today at the Patreon link in the description box below.